and welcome to the webinar for Meister Plan for the Portfolio Coordinators. My name is Debbie Somerville, Director of Customer Success, and it is my pleasure to host this webinar for you today. The next hour is really going to be focused in on um, challenges that we hear happen with portfolio coordination, um, typically in the PMO, understanding what role PMOs play within the Meister Plan system. And the majority of time, I will be sharing what Meister Plan can do for you. All right. Did you ever hear the saying? I don't have enough time to get things done. Well, the saying resonates because we definitely don't have enough time to get the wrong things done. And the Meister Plan is a portfolio planning tool which ensures the right projects are being prioritized and determines when projects can be done based on the capacity you have available. And this process is critical no matter what your use case is to ensure the right projects are started, and then the good but not yet projects um, wait until you can get everything else done. In the portfolio management space, there's definitely different roles that come together to make sure everything is successful. Um, project managers and resource managers have an important role when it comes to portfolio planning, and leadership has a very critical role to portfolio planning. It's making sure the value of what you're doing will solve what you're trying to accomplish for your objectives. All of these roles work together. And what I will show you today is how you can make sure, are we doing the right things? Are we doing them in the right way? Are we getting them done well? And are we getting the benefits? Because one of the biggest things that cause companies from not creating the value they wanted comes from a Harvard Business Study that says within the top three reasons that you would not get the value that you desire is too many initiatives at one time, and insufficiently managed resources. So as leadership, portfolio coordinators and PMO, it is your role to make sure you are able to guide the discussion on what is too many and making sure the resources are available to do the work. And I'm pretty confident those on this call today know the value of effective resource utilization and the effects it has on creating value. Gartner's research is clear that overbooked resources will contribute to project failure. And this is a hidden danger to not just one project, but to your entire portfolio. So without an easy way to see this, you cannot effectively react to this. And I would say while resource management may not be directly under your responsibility, the awareness this problem has and bringing that awareness to the leadership group and those that can solve that problem is the differentiator for you. Being able to see the problem and guide the questions of how to solve it. There is value in increasing the span of time for portfolio planning. Getting beyond the next six weeks and getting to a six to 12 month view can add quite a bit of advantage for you. Why? Because the longer the lead time you have knowing who you need to hire is important, whether it's building a skill set or having the budget to hire, that is important to know. The time to negotiate the projects that will deliver the value to your strategy. This is not bottoms up planning. You don't have all the work um, breakdown. You don't have the um, project plans yet in place. You don't have the stories all written out. This is about talking at a high level what can get done and what's reasonable 
capacity to make that happen. And this is important. Um, if you're not doing this much advanced notice today, kind of working your way into it, um, educating those that are understanding what that roadmap looks like 12 months out, it's, it's not a commitment at a project level. It is your best understanding with some level of uncertainty still, whether that's a 75% uncertainty or a 60%. It, it's not the 10% commitment that you usually give towards that budget planning. So do not penalize project teams for being wrong 12 months in advance. However, it's important to get better at, you know, the opportunity is to get better at portfolio planning and to get better at project estimation. Both come into play when it comes to portfolio and capacity planning. All right, let's get into the software and really start showing off um, what features will support, are you doing the right things? So let's start with our board view. It's a traditional uh, Kanban style view that allows you to see projects at a glance, um, usually in a work stage. Right now I have a stage here of I'm ready to, um, come to the meeting and talk about, um, should this be approved? I'm maybe um, after the meeting, I either got approved or rejected. And so you can move things quickly to another stage. You can also drag things down below a cutoff line, which is means we're not planning to do this yet, okay? You can move it above a must have line, which means usually this is not negotiable. We have to get this done under a time commitment, maybe compliance, maybe um, you know, some infrastructure security areas that just are that critical. In this view, um, it's very configurable. You can filter by any number of um, fields that you have attached to your projects. Um, you're able to configure what you show on each of the cards. And in this case, I'm showing the score and the benefits. Perhaps I want to roll up um, the costs that are associated with um, these projects um, in, in each of the columns or the score. Um, you can do many different KPIs that we have tracked within our system. The other thing that's really um, pretty new to Meister Plan is being able to have swim lanes at the same time, whether this is for um, what projects are coming by which sponsor or for which value stream, making sure, again, you are focused on the work and progressing the work in the right sequence to get approval, to get um, moving faster than some of the other ones. Notice also uh, when having swim lanes, you are able to see the, the score that I have summed up here can be contributed to each of the rows within the total portfolio. While not a new feature, um, one of our um, features that are well used usually during that meeting that you're discussing projects and which ones should be moving forward or is it ready to move forward is our comments feature. When highlighting any project, you're able to comment on what needs to be done, the next action, and you can also um, mention somebody on who should work on that. That person will get an email sent to them, and so it's a really great way to collaborate and trigger an email right from that meeting and not having to open up Outlook or some other things, um, notes to get done after the call, get it done during the, the meeting. On any one of our views, you're able to share these um, as and, and save them as a um, custom view. You can give rights to other people to also access that view when you have something that is a common view everybody should access. Now we get a question, how do you make the right projects more visible, more transparent? And, and we talk about scoring when it comes to that. So the question, how important is this one compared to that one? 
The scoring helps bring that visibility to that meeting, um, to any one of our uh, views here. Um, you're able to have a weighted score within Meister Plan. That weighted score can be made up of two or more, one or more fields. And I can show you a template at the end of um, this webinar that helps you kind of put together what's what are those uh, criteria that management's already thinking about that you could put here as the scoring mechanism? Once you have a score, it allows you to really be um, pretty flexible on being able to rank projects by that score. And if you're not using it for ranking, you can definitely be using it to guide the conversation and question, why are we doing this one first? when this other one seems to connect more to our strategy, more towards our goals, more towards the reasons we're doing work. Now, after each strategy session, um, there is an opportunity to rescore. And, um, and when updating that, all the projects behind the scenes will get rescored and you can make a decision. Do I want to resort, re-rank our entire portfolio based on that new score? Um, so these are things we can guide you through on making sure you're doing it in the right fashion. But this is really a nice view to be able to say, um, are you doing things in the right sequence and having the score more readily available? Let me um, show you some of the flexibility we have with custom fields. And there's some new things as a portfolio coordinator you might be interested in um, um, putting into Meister Plan. One is um, the typical text field, single line, multi line. It's all about the number of characters you're putting in there. We see these commonly used for documenting the, pr the purpose of the project, the status of the project, um, whereas single select fields are the most versatile, in my opinion. Uh, single select fields allow you to score um, items, and this is where you would enter the score color code the answer to that item. It allows you to group in any one of our views or filter in any one of our views. Um, so very, very um, flexible in terms of how to use it. The resource field is um, also one of our newer fields and it gives a way to um, add someone other than the project manager to a project. So you might have a lead architect, you might have a sponsor. Um, who do you want to keep informed? These um, answers then are really anybody that can be working on projects or as part of the resource pool can be added to a project to be kept informed. And because of our notifications that we have inherently in Meister Plan, you can turn on being notified when an update occurs on your project, when, you, when you're uh, being mentioned on a project, of course, you'll get an email, but there's some um, inherent notifications that help keep people informed. As you know, it's, it's, um, the communication is, um, can be complicated, but um, this is just one more way to try and keep um, others understanding what's happening in the portfolio. We spoke about different levels of fields, um, and we spoke about why do projects. Um, tagging projects to the reason you're doing it, whether it's a goal or an objective, um, gives the ability to see that within Meister Plan, to be able to group the roadmap based on these goals. You can add new goals and simply drag those projects over to the goals that they support. Uh, keep an eye on our roadmap because we will be enhancing this goal area within the next uh, few quarters. And it really will give a nice portfolio dashboard for your goal progress. One other field I want to bring your attention to, and while not the glorious when you think of fields, um, can help portfolio coordinators organize their portfolio. And that's what we're calling project types. You can have different project types, whether that be capitalized projects or operational projects, customer projects versus product development. Your different types of projects can be configured to show details differently. 
The details within a Meister plan is very configurable. You can add many different sections in organizing it many different ways. Think of this as um, kind of a stopping point of um, executives or team members to see what this project is about. Um, you'd be able to see who's working on the project, what are those in intermediate deliverables. So uh, however you organize your, your projects, you can configure that differently between different types. You can also score each project type differently. So inherently, you might have capitalized projects as um, some of the more important ones over, say, smaller run the business, and you can um, add that to your scoring mechanism. So configurable, um, very configurable is Meister Plan, and bringing that all together in the views and making it more transparent is what it's all about. I'd like to show Roadmap as one of our next views. So while prioritizing this work, keeping people connected to the priority of that work is important. And our roadmap is one of those areas. It's, um, it's a read-only view, but you can configure it in certain ways. Um, and let me show you how to do that configuration. Let me drill down to a Zoom level of month. You can, of course, do week, quarter, or year. Um, being able to see all milestones sometimes is a little much. Um, being able to then drill it into where are those milestones and then only drill into one project at a time is definitely flexible within our roadmap view. Other things that you can do is configure um, how do you want to color code the, the Gantt chart. So um, whether it's what phase that project is in, maybe showing the percent complete if, if you're showing some active projects, you're able to get into a different level of awareness on when project phases are complete. Um, you can also see some additional um, information when milestones or projects that are dependent on each other won't achieve the, the date. And so if one project is relying on the other project and yet the dates are slipping, you get quick awareness by those milestone dependencies turning red. Some current um, changes that have happened in our roadmap view is being able to um, hone in on certain milestones and not cloud the screen with too many. So being able to maybe look at just the next three months of milestones is, is um, easy to do. Also, um, maybe you're, you only care about the milestones in the execution phase, those that are more launch related. Notice how um, the roadmap view has simplified in nature by just seeing um, a, a, a more limited set of milestones. We often hear customers um, wanting to make sure um, those milestones that um, are, are launch dependent, are launch related, um, talking about that. Are we ready for the launch? Um, what do we need to be ready? Are the teams trained? So being able to, again, focus on that is um, a good uh, feature. If you make some changes here and find um, that grouping it maybe in a different way, um, being able to add some different levels of milestones here, and I want to add all of them back, you can save custom views here and authorize it to those groups that will get more benefit out of seeing um, a, a view uh, grouped in a certain way. And just a reminder, depending on your audience of this roadmap view, how it's sorted could make a difference. And so this sorting projects by timing or rank, the difference here is when I'm sorting it by timing, I'm just trying to condense a lot of projects together, and I care more about the timing of start and end as a guiding discussion. However, if your mindset is really to make sure that the rank um, is shown here, grouping this or sorting this by rank, make sure that the lower ranked items, the lower priority items are shown lower in the list, 
So there's no discussion here that um, what's important to start working on. Let me um, open up mobile sales uh, as one of the projects. Since a lot of these newer features um, are milestone related, I'd like to bring your attention here to some of the um, milestone related sections that are available within your project details. Um, adding milestones is very easy. Today, you can um, assign it any kind of description. Of course, now that you see it on the roadmap, you want to be as condensed uh, or as concise as you can. Project phase, you can tie it to any phase that you've configured in your manage section, and then you put a date. We are making um, some improvements even to this area um, in, a, in 2025, which allows you to add some additional um, information like on track or off track, um, or is this milestone completed? If those things are important to you, um, we have a online roadmap you can vote on and you can um, put your vote and um, make sure that gets escalated up to a higher priority. All right. Dependencies are also important. Um, if you have many people needing to give a deliverable to some other project, adding a dependency can be done in Portfolio Designer, as you probably remember if you have used Meister Plan before, but also here in Project Details. So a milestone in this project uh, requires something to be from another project and what you're tying it is milestone to milestone. You can quickly see if the dates are not going to be met, if the milestone you need here is not going to allow you to get that milestone deliverable from some other project. So the awareness in all of our views is really trying to make things um, clear that uh, a conversation needs to happen. All right, there is another challenge, right, that portfolio coordinators have, and it's, are we getting projects done well? One of the areas that come into play there is um, creating a scenario, which is like a playground. It's a copy of your plan. Um, I can add a scenario, add an open, the scenario is grabbing all the projects within your portfolio, putting them in a copy uh, so that any changes I make within this test scenario um, can be made without affecting what is really there um, uh, from your last time that everybody approved what was happening. Making sure projects are done well is all about looking for resource issues um, first and looking for financial concerns next. The idea of constraints that happen in your portfolio will cause you to have project failure. So looking at a list of forced ranked projects and if this one's not as important, you can move those projects down. Being able to see clearly the red is a cause to, to look further that you have constraints happening on that project. By highlighting that project, it, it hones in on those roles or people that are assigned to that project. So notice I have three people working on this project. The junior consultants and the project managers are over capacity. And when you look at the amount they're over, just by hovering over this histogram, you can see there is a little concern here that you are one FTE over and there's not a way to get this done. And if you were to move out projects that are a lower priority, you can see when you can get that done based on the capacity you have available. However, you can also see there's a constraint to a deliverable here. And so taking all of this into account can be very complex, right? And without a software that allows you to see how to manipulate what to do um, 
maybe um, change the dates, maybe change the people, maybe change the timing, um, allows you to get a better option on the table and again, guide the conversation. Doing this as quick as possible allows everyone to hit reset and making sure again, working on the right projects without the capacity constraints is the goal. Say you had projects that you just realized you don't need to do right away. It's easy to move those um, quickly below the must have line, which then says no longer do you need to consider capacity for those projects when they're below the cutoff line. You can easily move projects above the must have line if there are certain things that need for sure to get done, or you can drag them above the must have line. Keeping a list of priorities, again, very important to the overall look of capacity, being able to see where the capacity runs out and make some decisions. Do I need to hire for that? Do I need to move the timing of that? Okay, do I need, can, is someone else available to fill in on that project? So these are decisions you can make within our scenario modeling. Reporting is available to look at two different scenarios and say, is this one better, option A, or is option B? Once you decide on um, a plan of attack, you can, with security levels, submit this back to the plan of record and be able to get everybody working towards the new plan. You can also then communicate that. Um, and if you remember, Anybody that is a resource um, field on that project, project managers, sponsors, lead architects, will automatically get a notification of this new change. Again, keeping people informed is also one of the goals. Let's look at um, some capabilities within the project details and wondering um, who out there is finding value in tracking time against the projects? Nobody likes to do that. We know it. Um, what I have heard is that if you're at the level of learning from past projects, tracking time is one of those really important features to be able to implement. At a, as a project manager, I can track time um, after, say, a weekly meeting and understanding where people worked on my project, I can get down to, say, a week level in this case and put in people's time. Perhaps they worked 10 hours. These guys, you know, this person worked 40 hours. Um, the senior consultant worked as planned. When you put in time, the system calculates the deviations to time. It allows then information to be brought up to monitor time at a global level and at a portfolio level. You're now able to get a project list with everyone's deviations and be able to question, if we're not working as planned, is that time going to have to extend these projects? So portfolio monitoring of time is very important to keep the projects on track and question before it's too late. It's also a great way to learn if certain project types take longer by tracking and learning from them. So I'd encourage you to tr start tracking time at some point, um, maybe for certain project types. Project managers can do that here. We also have a My Schedule view. If you get team members to come in here and track time, it's as easy as clicking on, I did work that, um, but, I, but I, of course, they didn't work uh, 20 hours, uh, hopefully not uh, within uh, two days, but they can override this um, by day or at the end of the week, if they work the plan, all they have to do is click, click. I've worked the plan. It will spread out the planned work for the amount of days that they um, enter it. So two places can be entered. My, my schedule for team members and details for project, deta um, project managers. Once those 
are entered on, I've seen weekly or monthly, depending on how urgent it is to look at these. Um, you can start seeing this, as I was mentioning, at a portfolio level. Now being able to get a list of your projects, what percent complete are they compared to that actual time worked? And the deviations, you can sort by the deviations and be able to start looking at which projects look most concerning and have a conversation with that project manager. Also at a project list level, um, you can bring in many different types of views here. I have one for time, I have one for budgets and looking at the deviations from the budgets. Um, I can look at a overview and get um, maybe the statuses that the project manager has been updating. So again, this could be your area of a quick, instead of using Excel for everything, it's all in one spot, just create a new view, save the view, other people can access that view. Portfolio dashboard is also another area that we have been improving. Um, if you looked early on at our beta version, um, you'll be pleased with uh, some of the new improvements we have done here. Um, couple things, um, we can, with our drill down of information, when I'm clicking on one of the charts, I can organize different data elements here to look at based on which chart I'm drilling down. So here on the pipeline, I care more to look at the score and the benefits. I would do this in configure details and I add the fields I wanna see. Whereas a different card, when I'm drilling down here, I probably wanna see more of the status. Maybe there's status notes I can put here. And again, just configure the details list a little differently based on what you want to see. The other things um, that you may have uh, looked at, maybe not, um, is you can filter um, each of the cards differently. So perhaps I don't care to see all the lower cards, but I only wanna see some that um, stages that are early on in, uh, in the pipeline. Um, maybe I don't wanna see all departments here. We have a new bubble chart that, um, is fun to play with um, and at the same time, uh, you need to think what is it you're trying to show, right? Um, in this case, I'm showing how important is the project by the net value along with some of the future costs um, and how, how good is a, of a fit is it to the strategy based on the color. And I'm sizing the bubble based on the score. So when you think of putting all of this together, it really puts a lot in front of you at one time. Another card, and these are called cards, you can um, add cards up here. Another card available is upcoming milestones. So looking again at um, how, what kind of milestones are important to this dashboard, I'm looking at the next six weeks. Um, perhaps um, I only care also to see milestones in a certain phase. You can filter that list pretty easily um, here, save the view, show it off to others. All right. Um, one of the other um, areas that you may be considering as a portfolio coordinator is thinking, yes, I know it's, it's important to do planning for six to 12 months. It's really great to have insights as to what budget needs do I need, um, whether it's financial or um, people, right? Um, however, if you are an organization that has project management tools and you're using those tools pretty rigorously, whether it's Project Online or Smartsheet or Jira, Azure DevOps, we have more capability recently to be able to manage connecting those tools using our new task connector. So think of connecting Jira, Microsoft Project, 
Smartsheet, whatever your tools of choice are, because we know teams like to work in different ways, methodologies um, cause you to use different tools. Being able to bring in the view of projects that um, are linked to other tools, and let me show you off what you can do. If I connect to a JIRA, for example, and I click on one of the epics, this could be a large initiative in JIRA. This um, allows me to see what work can be done um, within that time period. And so all the tasks from that tool would see that you don't have enough time to do that work. It provides an extra level of awareness. And this is one of our first steps towards a better portfolio view of the reality of work. And so if this project is going over and that project's going over soon, you have more constraints. And without that awareness, um, you could be looking at thinking you can get it all done and, and you can't. So talk to us if task, looking at tasks and being able to um, see that you are not going to hit your plan is something that would add value to you. One of the other areas we have heard is there's, there's value in getting more people to see this data so that you don't have to copy it other places. You can create some shared views here. What we have in Meister Plan is the ability to secure each different type of users coming into the tool with security that's right for them. Maybe they're just reading um, something and just wanting to look at roadmaps. Maybe they're a team member and you want them to update their actuals but not to update anything else. Our security supports many different types of user groups to go into Meister Plan. The other thing that will help make it easy is to um, customize your navigation. So for example, coming into a software that has a lot of different features can be overwhelming and you might not be ready to get them started on some of these features. Resource managers going into Team Planner, you don't need the team members to see Team Planner. You might not even care the project manager see Team Planner. So you can hone in which user groups can get access to some of these views, making it easier for them to see and simplify the view for them. The other thing to highlight is um, our portfolios is a way to look at a group of projects or a group of people. And so we have very configurable portfolios. And so while the single source is Meister Plan, you don't have to look at everybody else's projects if you only care about a certain department's projects or a certain type of project, capitalized or operational projects. So our new view here for portfolios allow you to combine the best of both worlds. I care about these projects and I care if my team in this department is working on projects outside this group of projects. So we now have the ability to do both. Here's our projects and tell me any project this team is working on. All right, um, very good. I have uh, probably given you a whirlwind of information to consider. Um, I want to kind of tie some of these things uh, together and where we can help you with your goals moving forward. We talked about scoring as are we doing the right things? Um, we have heard a lot of ways to prioritize projects. Um, the squeaky wheel, return on investment, weighted project score, and some of it depends on the type of project you're working on. Meister Plan can support this um, scoring. Um, we, we use a weighted score mechanism and um, organizing it in a template that we can provide to you. 
um, is, is a good way to start. What is important? What's in the management's mind when they're scoring projects? And then how would you indicate how important that one is uh, to something else? Again, that could be just to guide the conversation. You don't even have to rank or sort your portfolio by that. So give us a call if you're interested in getting started with scoring. I also want you to keep your eyes on the task connector. We're going to be improving this area um, with, with future releases. Think of um, what is in um, a project you have today that you don't want to duplicate in Meister Plan. You make your plan six to 12 months out. Now the reality of those changes to that work can really be transferred to Meister Plan so much easier using our API and our task connector. Give us a call if you have interest in learning more about that and how to do that integration. The last thing I would like to mention is we have um, many free opportunities for our customers. We have virtual networks that you can get connected to. It's three or five companies that want to solve a similar problem together. We have an IT one starting this fall. If you are a larger IT shop that um, has a, ca a capacity focus, resource management focus, give us a call. Um, we also have in 2025 an agile planning um, or, or safe virtual network. So a lot of companies are looking to figure out how this works together within a six, 12 month planning horizon and how to put these practices together. We also have some workshops and training that's available. Um, estimating time at a high level is very hard. It's hard enough at a task level, right? Um, we have some um, training available that brings together a many years of practices. And you can um, learn this within your team area of thinking of complexity of projects and how to estimate that, what to set up in Meister Plan to learn from that. Give us a call. We have some really great practices to share there. And integration um, and Power BI reports. Looking at this data in Meister Plan may be your go-to. If your stakeholders are outside of Meister Plan today, perhaps a, a report is better suited for that user group. We can help you get started quickly with our reporting essentials pack. I wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. And there's some really great things you can do with Meister Plan at a portfolio coordinated level. You can also see some of our past webinars for resource managers and project managers. We have features for everybody, every user group. Give us a call. Thank you.